Okay, so this is Adam's amazing portfolio with an asterisk because it wasn't that amazing, although I ended okay. So I bought five stocks initially for this presentation. I bought Tesla, I bought Blue Cora, Yahoo, Morgan Stanley, and Smart Technology. And I traded Yahoo, I didn't trade Yahoo, I actually traded Tesla at week five and bought Arrowhead Research Corporation, which you'll see. Okay, so Tesla was my first stock. Did not do too well at all. So the history is it's an electric vehicle company founded in 2003 in Palo Alto, California. And it released a Tesla Roadster in 2008, which was the first all electric vehicle, lithium ion batteries, and the very first electric vehicle with an EV, both, uh, EV battery range of over 200 miles per charge. And it also released the Model S, which is its newest car, in 2012, which has been huge. It's been released in the US, it's been released in many countries, I think 32 countries nationwide. And that's gotten a lot of news for Tesla. The stock skyrocketed in April 2013. A lot of investors had tons of confidence about Tesla and the future of Tesla and electric vehicle motors um, at large. And I think that it's also the future of not only the nation, but the world. And that's part of why I invested in Tesla. Why Tesla? It's the expansionary phase of the business cycle, which is a great time for tech stocks, lots of investing. Tesla is extremely innovative. It's the only company that produces fully electric cars like that. Others, like Hyundai, are starting to begin, but they're really at the forefront, at the brink of innovation, and investors who want to be a part of the future of electric vehicles are investing in Tesla. Also, it was recently bullish with huge, huge momentum trading. Even, I recognized from the start that Tesla, when I bought it, was very overvalued. Um, it definitely was not worth the 180 so dollars share price that I bought it for. Earnings per share were negative $1.36 per share, which is horrible. Their P ratio is negative. So a lot of it was just speculation about the future growth of Tesla. And I was hoping that that trend would continue for the presentation. Now I bought Tesla at close to $180 a share and I sold it at 160. Now I got out a bit early, I sold it week five, but as you can see, Tesla actually started going up a little bit in the beginning. I was excited about it, thinking that the momentum would continue, but it crashed down a little bit and I wanted to sell it as soon as three weeks hit. Didn't have the opportunity to do it then, but once Tesla fell down a bit here, and there was news of the Model S fires, which was three cars of Tesla's, there had been news that they caught on fire. Later it was proven that two of them were from debris, one of them was from a crash, nothing out of the ordinary, or had nothing wrong with Tesla's machinery, but it really knocked down this investor confidence, and people started to recognize Tesla, wow, this is very overvalued, pulling their money out. So I sold Tesla, very low, right around here, which a lot of people said is not a good idea, selling low, but I just needed to get out of Tesla completely, which turned out being a great idea because it continued to plummet downwards and I would have lost a lot more money than I did. So I lost $2,000 for my portfolio. Next is Blue Cora Inc., which was by far my most profitable, profitable stock. The history of it, it was founded in 1996 as Infospage, which is sort of a yellow pages for businesses to be able to contact each other um, and make deals. It reached $1,300 a share in 2000 before dropping to $2.67 a share in 2002. And that was partly attributed to the dot-com bubble burst, which you've heard about before, but also there was huge controversy. Naveen Jain, who was the CEO and founder, had been convicted also of insider trading in around 2002. Lucora, which, which was InfoSpace at the time, was also had a lawsuit filed against it for false accounting methods. It reported only one-third of its revenue through weird methods, so that got them in a lot of trouble. But in 2012, InfoSpace bought Tax Act, which is a tax preparation and solution services for both um, tax preparers, accountants, and consumers. And that was in 2012, and with that purchase, they changed the name to Lucora. They also recently bought Monoprice, which is an online website for consumer goods buying electronic consumer goods, stereos, um, and iPods, things like that, in August 2012. Now, why did I buy Blue Cora? Number one owns Monoprice, which is a tech stock, and I believe that holiday uh, spending on uh, electronics, et cetera, would exceed expectations. Also, it has very strong cash flow. The CEO, Bill Ruckelshaus, recently uh, announced, or right before I bought the stock, actually, that they were looking for new investment opportunities. And also, they have very strong cash flow. They have $50 million, I believe, in free cash flow, which they announced that they would use to invest in other opportunities. Also, low interest rates, which is very conducive to investing, uh, as posted by the Fed, so that's cheap money to expand their businesses. 
So I bought Lucor at $23 a share and I sold it at 29, a bit of a $29 a share. And it made $5,000 for my portfolio, which was huge. Mainly because of its earnings report, its revenue tripled what expectations were for a quarter, which is gigantic. And as you can see right here, earnings were released and the share price shot up. Tons of investors wanted to get in on Lucora, seeing that it has a very promising future. And this is, below is Lucora in blue, uh, paralleled with the NASDAQ, which you can see grew a little bit, but Lucora really shot up to like 40%. Next is Yahoo Inc., which did very well for me also. It was founded by Jerry Yang and David Filo in 1995. And in 1998, it was the most popular starting point for web users. Now, Marissa Meyer became the CEO in July 2012 coming from Google, which you heard about earlier. Why did I buy Yahoo? Now, also expansionary phase of the business cycle, which is true for a lot of my stocks. I ended up buying four tech stocks and then one blue chip, which you'll hear about, which is Morgan Stanley. And I wanted an explosive, I really want to do well with explosive earnings, which tech stocks have the potential to do. Now, I bought it because there's lots of restructuring under Marissa Meyer. She brought in new people for her board and also some from Google. And also she'd been restructuring Yahoo completely taking away certain apps, emphasizing certain apps like Fantasy Football, which has done really well, and Yahoo Mail, um, but also cutting back on certain employees. Also, there's been huge momentum trading. Ever since Marissa Meyer took her post in June 2012, what happened was the stock started to rise completely. People saw very strong leadership in Marissa Meyer and wanted to follow that. So I bought Yahoo at $31 a share, and I sold it at close to $37 a share. It made three and a half thousand dollars for my portfolio. And although I thought it would go up due to Marissa Meyer and momentum trading in that sense, I think it was more because of Alibaba, which is a Chinese company similar to an eBay, and it has been huge lately. Yahoo invested in Alibaba very early on, bought 30% of the company, and very recently over the course of the project, Alibaba announced that they were holding an IPO, which is valued right now at about $100 billion, which is gigantic. And since Alibaba has not gone public yet, and investors can't invest in on the public market, people have been investing in Yahoo as a way to invest in Alibaba without being officially allowed to do so yet. So everyone who wants to invest in Alibaba is pouring their money into uh, to Yahoo because Yahoo holds so much of that. Now here below is Yahoo in blue compared with Google in green, which is also skyrocketed recently, and you can even see that Yahoo has exceeded Google recently in share price, and also just with the NASDAQ as a baseline. Next is Smart Technologies, which was by far my worst stock. Uh, it was horrible. So I'll get into some history first. It produces interactive technology to enhance learning, the smart board. Um, founded in 1987 in Alberta, Canada. It has 150 patents with about 600 patents pending right now and its IPO was in July 2010, close to 20 year, a bit over 20 years after it was founded, which jump-started its expansion. It raised $160 million through its IPO, which it used to invest and expand its operations, which is why it was able to become the lead interactive learning software for the United States. Tons of schools nationwide have smart boards and classrooms. Now, why did I buy smart tech? Expansionary phase of the business cycle also. Uh, easy money for their investing, and interest rates are low, so they'd be able to expand their operations, and they showed promise in expanding uh, the market. There was news right before I bought Smart Tech that they had recently made their software compatible with certain Exxon router systems and other computer systems, which would allow them to expand to different, uh, become compatible with other technology and thus expand their operations. So I thought that that was the direction that Smart Tech was headed in, and so I wanted to invest in that. But I bought it at $2.70 a share, sold it at $2.11 a share, it lost $4,000 for my portfolio. And the reason was that it had very, very low earnings. And it seems as if there had been a saturated market. They reported horrible revenue, uh, parallel to expectations, and it seems as if it's a saturated market. I don't think that they're coming out with any new mind-blowing technology, and their main production is in smart boards, which US schools already have, and it doesn't look like we're gonna be getting new ones anytime soon. So I don't see much promise in smart tech at all. And my next stock, the last of the five initial stocks that I bought, is Morgan Stanley, which is a global financial services company. It was founded in 1935 following the Glass-Steagall Act, which split commercial and investment banking. So Morgan Stanley was first a part of J.P. Morgan, 
But once this act came out, JP Morgan could, not, could no longer be an investment bank and a commercial bank. So they split. JP Morgan retained the commercial banking, and Morgan Stanley branched off of that and became an investment bank. Now, Morgan Stanley has been the major underwriter for many IPOs, uh, notably Google IPO, which at the time was the largest in history, and other major IPOs. And it also had a major merger with Dean Witter, which was uh, a company that sold stocks to small investors, and that was in 1997, and that merger was valued at about $10.2 billion. Now, why did I buy Morgan Stanley? It's a blue chip, so that promised me some stability in my portfolio for tech stocks, which are more volatile. And also, it's had a recent emphasis on diversification, which stocks, uh, companies similar to Morgan Stanley, like Goldman Sachs, have seemed more risky to investors. And Morgan Stanley's a great company because with the Great Recession just in the past, investor confidence is a bit shaky, and especially with the government shutdown of recent, investors want to invest in a company like Morgan Stanley with solid diversification and thus stability. Now, I also bought it because I was waiting for the government shut down to resolve, hoping that once it did, and it, it would soon, that Morgan Stanley's share price would shoot up, which it did. Um, I bought Morgan Stanley at a bit over $27 a share, sold it at above $31 a share, making me $3,000 for my portfolio. It had very strong earnings, and also the government shutdown was resolved. As you see, I bought Morgan Stanley right here when it was low. Government shutdown was resolved right here, continued up, and once they posted their earnings, shot up again. Now, their earnings doubled expectations, which was huge for the company, and below I have a graph of Morgan Stanley compared to Goldman Sachs. Both of them released their earnings right around here in mid or early November, and as you can see, Goldman Sachs' earnings were modest compared to Morgan Stanley's, which is increased. Next was Arrowhead Research Corporation, which I only bought at week five with the money that uh, I had left over from selling Tesla. Now, in history, it's a nanomedicine company. It was founded in 2003, and it owns three notable companies. One of them is Colando, which is RNA, ribonucleic acid, specializes in gene silencing to, present, to prevent diseases. Um, Ablaris, which is anti-obesity therapeutics and research in preventing obesity, or slowing that down. And Leonardo, which is a drug delivery company, so they can transport their drugs. Why did I buy Arrowhead? Well, I wanted to buy a relatively volatile tech stock to potentially boost my portfolio. I was very discouraged after I sold Tesla and wanted something to possibly bring my portfolio back up with shooting up. And as pharmaceutical companies are normally given to huge downturns or huge upturns, I was hoping that maybe they'd release some new information about their new hepatitis B drug, ARC520, which said it had a lot of news about it recently. And if they, if anything new or any breakthroughs had happened, then my stock price would potentially shoot up. And it's also skyrocketed since July of 2013, as you can see below. It's gone up very steadily. They released their new anti obesity drug, which did incredibly for the company. So I bought Arrowhead at $7.79 a share, remained mostly stagnant for the entire project, lost me a small bit of money. And then the very last week, positive news surrounding their new hepatitis B drug came out and shot up 7%. I think the last two days of the stock project left me with a profit of $900. And that was because of the attention. Uh, lastly, graph of my portfolio. Started off, I was actually leading the project in the first few weeks. My stocks were doing pretty well. Smart Tech was actually going up in that time. Tesla was too. Dropped down when Tesla shot down, Smart Tech released their earnings, and also then continued to rise once Yahoo posted their earnings, huge speculation surrounding Alibaba. Um, Blue Core released its earnings, maybe thousands of dollars, and my portfolio began to recover. And right here with Arrowhead and other companies continue to exceed 106,000. And I ended up okay. Thank you.